What is up, Wire fans? Kino here, and we are back with a whole new season of The Wire. Uh, we are starting the first episode of season two, Ebb Tide. Um, now, this is my first time watching you know, this series, so this is my first experience with it. Although, I'll admit that I am aware of the fact that um, I, I've heard that season two in particular is considered to be not as good um, as the first season. Um, but I'm trying to, you know, push that aside and try to form my own opinion of it and, you know, really just get my experience watching it for the first time. And I'll say that this episode was actually pretty interesting. Um, it's definitely different than the first season. Um, it seems like it's going to be more of a focus on um, the docks and on unions and all that kind of stuff. Although a lot of the main cast is returning as well. Um, so I, I, I thought it was interesting to see, you know, the different uh, side of Baltimore like this. Um, but we'll see where the, the series goes. But um, for now, let's take a look at this episode. Um, so as we saw at the end of the last season, uh, McNulty got reassigned from Homicide uh, to working the police boat um, in the Baltimore Harbor. Uh, that's the one place he didn't want to end up being. Uh, but his sergeant uh, ratted him out to Rawls and told him that's where McNulty did not want to be reassigned. So with McNulty, um, you know, working in the police boat, uh, he comes across this woman uh, floating in the water. Um, they, at first, they think she maybe jumped off the bridge and committed suicide, um, although they learn later that it was a murder. Um, she was hit in the head. Um, and it's funny, they, the, the, his department, his old homicide department, was going to push the case off onto um, the Baltimore County. Um, so I guess it's just different jurisdictions. Um, but McNulty proved that uh, the body floated across the, uh, you know, the river or whatever, um, and it came from the Baltimore side of it. So um, they, they're stuck with the case, and they have no idea who this woman is. So it's going to be a hard case for them to solve. Um, but that's classic McNulty. He's forcing them to deal with um, a murder when they really don't want to. Besides that, though, we've got a lot of returning characters. So um, we meet Prez again. Um, he's been changed by the, uh, you know, the Barksdale investigation. He wants to do real police work now. Um, although his father-in-law, the major, um, wants him to move up the ranks and just have a desk job. Um, and so we'll, we'll see where he goes this season, but he wants to do real work again, uh, working in narcotics. And speaking of real work, um, we see that Kima has been uh, promoted to detective, um, but she has a desk job as well. So she is uh, managing um, paperwork for, I don't know what it specifically was, something like seizures. Um, so not street work, not the kind of stuff that she gets excited about doing. Although her girlfriend wants her to be safe, especially now that they're going to try to have a baby. Um, they're talking about like artificial insemination. Um, so they're looking to start a family. Although I can tell that Kima is, you know, unsatisfied with her job. And we'll see if it if she kind of tries to make a return back to, you know, the street crimes. Um, speaking of reassignment, too, uh, Daniels uh, got reassigned. He was on his way to becoming a major, but now he's in charge of uh, the evidence locker, um, which I can tell is like a dead end job. They just stuck him there because they don't like him anymore. Um, so, again, we, we saw from last season that um, having integrity has consequences for your career. Um, but speaking of that, we have some things going on with the drug dealers. Uh, Stringer is now in charge with Avon in prison, and he is, you know, checking his crew for any leaks. Um, they have this funny situation where um, Bodie uh, is supposed to bring back the drugs, um, but there's no drugs in the car, and he thinks he fucked up. Although uh, Stringer had him followed and knows that they didn't do anything, um, and it turns out that their supplier, a guy named Roberto. Um, is not going to sell them drugs anymore. Sorry if you can hear the, the siren outside. There's, there's probably a drug deal going on out there. Um, but uh, the, he's not going to sell them drugs anymore um, because he's worried. He got pinched by the DEA, and he's worried that Avon sold him out, and that's why he got such a light sentence. Now, we know that's not the case. Avon got a light sentence because um, the police didn't have any evidence on him. Although this puts the Barksdale crew in a little bit of jeopardy because they don't have access to drugs anymore, which is their, you know, their bread and butter. That's how they make their money. If they don't have access to drugs, they're going to lose out on the towers. They're going to lose out on everything. Um, so we're, we'll, we'll see where that goes this season. Um, but definitely 
uh, the, the newest and most interesting thing happening is um, we have a new focus. Um, so we're introduced to quite a few new characters, um, specifically uh, dock workers, uh, union people um, who work at the Baltimore docks. Um, the main guy, I, I don't know his last name, he's, he's Polish, um, but his, his first name's Frank. Um, he seems to be kind of the leader, um, and he's the leader of the union, and um, he's involved with some uh, shifty stuff at the uh, at the docks. Um, so one, he is trying to get uh, political support um, to uh, for, for more jobs, basically on the dock. Um, you know, he's trying to influence politicians and do donations and things like that, kind of similar to what Avon was doing. Um, so we're seeing again that crime, you know makes its way up to the politicians of, of the city. Um, so he has that going on on one end. On the other end, he seems to have some sort of like criminal um, you know, enterprise going on. I don't know what it was specifically, um, but he was, I think, trying to sell uh, one of the uh, shipping containers to uh, this Greek guy, although it was a Ukrainian guy who was picking it up. Um, but uh, for some reason, they, they never, they just stood there. They didn't take the, uh, the shipping container. So eventually they put the shipping container back. Um, and then later on, they find that um, uh, the police just randomly stumble across it. And they find all these uh, dead young women inside of it. Um, so I think it was some kind of like sex trafficking um, thing. Uh, I don't, we don't know the specifics of it yet. Um, but I think that uh, that's going to be a big problem this season as they, the police are obviously going to start investigating, you know, what happened to these women. And that's going to lead to probably other stuff going on at the dock. It seems like there's going to be some shady things going on there, especially with McNulty now assigned as a police boat unit. So uh, maybe it'll actually turn out for the best that he's down there. He's going to solve some more crimes. Um, but in addition to uh, Frank... Uh, we meet his uh, nephew, Nick, um, his son, Ziggy, who um, he seems like an interesting character. He uh, uh, he's kind of like a drunk. He's he's wild. He's kind of incompetent um, at the bar. He like takes his dick out and flashes everyone. Um, so I'm wondering if he might, uh, you know, inadvertently cause some problems for his dad. Um, but we'll see where that goes. Um, but uh Definitely not a bad start to the first season. Although the one thing I did not like was um, they changed the theme song. Now, I don't hate the new theme song. It's it's the same song, but it's sung by a different person now. Um, and it's kind of got this, like, uh, you know, Louis Armstrong kind of, you know, very raspy voice uh, singing in the song, um, which is not that pleasant to listen to. Um, not Not disparaging the singer or anything like that i'm sure they're a great singer but um yeah definitely doesn't have the kind of charm that the you know soul version of the song from the first season had i kind of wish they just stuck with that um but um you know different season different part of the of the city um i guess they're just trying to kind of differentiate with a different song um so i'm wondering now if like each season will have a uh, a different version of the same song um, which would be interesting to see. I wonder how many different versions they can do. Can they do like a maybe a rock version or a rap version or uh, maybe a female singer or something? I, I don't know where, where they'll go with it. Um, but that's getting way ahead of the game. For now, we're going to watch season two. Um, so, yeah, can't wait to watch the next one. I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, we are back with another episode of The Wire. Uh, today we're looking at Season 2, Episode 2, Collateral Damage. Now, there's a bunch of interesting things happening in this episode. Um, the first is with um, the police officer. Um, it's uh, Valchuk, the, the, the guy who was the um, father-in-law of Prez. Um, now, he has a beef with... Um, God, I'm, I'm blanking on his last name. Frank, um, the union guy. Um, Sabatka, that's his name. Um, he has. They, they have like a beef that's been like, it seems like it's been going on a while. Like their families knew each other. Um, and Valchek's apparently been an asshole, you know, his whole life. Um, now he's really pissed off that these uh, union guys funded a window for the church uh, when he wanted to do that. And he's realizing that they have way more money than they should have um, for being, you know, a poor union. 
Um, they're making political donations and everything like that. And so he thinks that they're into something dirty, which they are. Um, now, he really wants uh, to take them down, not for any, you know, like, reasons of justice, but just because he hates the guy. Um, so he goes to Burrell, who is now in line for being police commissioner, and he agrees to support him if he'll give him men um, to form a new detail around uh, Sabatka. So um, it's funny, they do the exact same thing as in season one. They assemble a team, um, they set them up in this like decrepit warehouse or something like that. Um, and funny enough, Prez is now the one leading it. So um, again, I think it's mostly because he's this guy's son-in-law, but we know that Prez is good police now. Um, so he'll probably you know want to do actual work. But we'll see, again, one of the themes from season one was that um, they only want the investigation to go so far. And in fact, um, uh, Valchek says that to Burrell. He's like, I'm not looking to take down the whole union. I'm just looking to take down this one guy. I don't want to go any further than that. But knowing Prez and knowing that he's all about justice now, um, he might start following the money and see that, like, it's more than just this guy who's involved in this. Um, th again, I think this goes all the way up to the politicians, just like last season. Um, so we'll see if, you know, he uncovers something he's not supposed to. Um, but so that they have another detail going, and hopefully we'll learn more about the people on that crew uh, later on. And in fact, one of them, I think, is the guy they cut loose um, from... Uh, the original team, I, I don't remember who it was. It was either the guy they got punched or the guy they sent back for uh, drinking. Um, they gave him a choice. He could either go to rehab or he could go continue the investigation. And so I think that's him they have on this team too. So um, it's cool that we're getting more character development, like I said, for a lot of characters who I just kind of thought were like one note assholes. Like Valchek, he apparently, he has a history, he has a background. Um, and maybe we'll learn more about this cop, too. Um, so we'll see where that goes. It's pretty interesting. And speaking of returning cops, uh, we finally see Carver again in his new role. Uh, he's working for Valchek, too. And he's been ordered to kind of harass these union guys and constantly make their lives difficult. So, um, you know, it seems like a, a downgrade for him to, you know, he, he was doing real police work before. But now he's kind of, you know, just serving you know, parking tickets and DUIs. Um, so I'm wondering if he's going to get fed up, you know, working for a guy like Valchek, but um, we'll see. Um, now, the main thing happening in this episode, again, is with the um, murdered girls that they found last episode. Um, so, or, or at first, they don't even know if it's a murder or not. Um, they think that um, the air vent got crushed accidentally and that these girls who are presumably prostitutes being smuggled into America just accidentally suffocated to death. And there's this whole back and forth negotiation of who's going to actually investigate this. Nobody wants it because they know that it's going to be very hard to clear this, especially since they don't even know the girls' names. Um, so uh, eventually, though, McNulty proves that it happened in Baltimore territory. Um, so Rawls has to take the case, even though it lowers his clearance rate down to nothing. Um, so again, McNulty is fucking with him. Um, and he's saying that, you know, what else can they do to me? Which I, I'm worried about. Maybe they'll find a way to fuck with him even more. I know Rawls was going to go after his badge last season. So I'm wondering if, if he pisses Rawls off enough, is he actually going to you know try to get him taken off the police force? which would be way worse than even just being assigned to the boating unit. Um, but we'll see where that goes. Um, but ultimately, uh, Bunk and uh, Freeman get assigned uh, this murder investigation, um, and they're paired with this new cop. It's, it's the cop who found them, the young girl. Um, so it looks like she's going to be a main character this season. Um, and I'm interested to see um, where they go with her, because she seems like an inexperienced cop. You know, she has this, like low-level beat just working the docks just not equipped to deal with murder um so we'll see what happens with her um mcnulty continues to sleep with um the district attorney or, or whoever she is um and you know she's wondering you know what's going on with them are they you know going to be together are they going to be serious are they just going to keep having sex and he just straight out tells her that if his wife ever wants to get back together with him he'll do it because he wants to be with his kids so um, we'll see where that goes. I mean, I, I think the McNulty and her go well together. Um, so I, 
I kind of hope they end up together. They seem like they work, like they're both, you know, wanting to take down criminals and everything. But, um, you know, things never go the way they're supposed to go in shows like these. Um, now, we actually learn what happened to the girls in this episode. Um, the Greek, uh, who I guess is like this, you know, underworld figure, kind of like Avon, um, is smuggling in girls, uh, you know, prostitutes to make money. And what happened was the crew of the ship um, that the girls were being transported in, they let the girls out to have sex with them. Um, and then uh, one of the, it got physical. They ended up killing one of the girls. And then the other girls knew about it. So they intentionally uh, damaged the air pipe so that they would all die because they didn't want anyone to know about this. Um, so the Greek finds out and he kills the guy that um, they, they got the information from. Um, so we learn what happened, and it looks like uh, this Greek guy is going to be like the main criminal force on the dock this season. So um, interested to see where they go with him, considering the fact that we still have um, Avon. We still have him to deal with. Um, so he's in prison now, um, but he's serving a very light sentence. And because of all his money and connections, he can get pretty much anything he wants in prison. Gets food, gets whatever. And... Uh, Weebay is in there as well. He's serving the murder uh, life in prison because of the murders he confessed to. Um, and there's this one uh, security guard or correctional officer that's uh, harassing him because apparently Weebay killed his cousin. Um, and Avon's not able to squash it. <coughs> Excuse me. Avon's not able to squash it right off the bat. So um, we're seeing that he ha his power has limits in prison. He's still a prisoner. He's not this all-powerful kingpin he was on the outside, and he has to rely on Stringer Bell um, to uh, take care of that and also to uh, make sure that D'Angelo's uh, girlfriend or whatever brings his kid around because <clears throat> D'Angelo took um, the murder rap and he's, or the drug rap, and he's doing 20 years, so they want to keep him happy. Um, so we have all these things going on. Um, I will say it's a it's a pretty interesting start. I'm I'm interested to see where they go with this uh, new detective unit to see what else is happening on the docks. Um, but I gotta say I'm I'm liking the season um, pretty much so far. So um, we'll see where it goes from here. Um, but thank you guys, and uh, we'll check out the next episode soon. All right, we are back with another episode of The Wire. Today we're looking at uh, episode three, Hot Shots. Um, now, there's quite a few things happening in this episode. Um, the first is, uh, this is the first introduction we get uh, to Omar this season. So um, he's back again. He has a new boyfriend. Um, and they are back in Baltimore, I believe. Um, and they are robbing um, drug dealers again. This time they have some help from um, two women who, uh, they were planning on robbing this joint and then they see the women come and do it and then they go and rob the women. Um, and it looks like they've teamed up to work together to um, you know, steal from these drug dealers. Um, so I'm wondering if these you know, women will be characters uh, starting now, um, but we'll see where that goes. Um, now, beyond that, uh, Bunk and Freeman um, investigate the uh, crew aboard the ship, although none of them speak English, or at least they pretend that they don't speak English, um, and they refuse to you know, cooperate uh, with the police. It's kind of their code of silence. Um, although they do learn some things in this episode. They learn that um, two of the sailors jump ship. Um, and they're able to kind of piece together what most likely happened, which is um, that uh, they killed one of the girls and then killed all the others to keep them silent. So they kind of know the story, but they don't have any evidence. Um, and they are able to get some information that um, connects the boat and the girls to France and this whole uh, you know underground network. Um, so they're getting some information, but again, they still don't have any IDs. Um, later on, McNulty learns that um, some of the girls got breast implants, um, all from the same clinic. Um, so they're starting to develop a case here, but again, um, they're just w without any kind of real resources to tackle all of this. Um, although McNulty is really determined to um, put a name to these girls so they don't just wind up as you know, uh, Jane Doe's and just get thrown into the system. So um, they're all really determined and 
Um, again, it, it seems like the new uh, lady cop that they have, I think her name is Russell's, um, because she said the title quote um, uh, is also really determined to um, you know do right um, and and provide you know justice for these ladies. Um, so it seems like yeah, she's going to be an integral part of this investigation, although not much has happened so far. And it and the case, I think it's going to come together eventually, but it does seem kind of disjointed from the two other. Um, elements that are happening in this episode, um, which is uh, one, the new detail. So um, it, it's pretty funny. Last episode, um, the uh, dock workers, they stole a police van um, full of equipment and they shipped it to a completely different city um, to get back at uh, Valchek for messing with them. Um, and so uh, Valchek is even more determined now to you know, get these guys, but he learns that the detail he got from, uh, I forget his name, Brells, um, the, the police commissioner, or who's in line to be police commissioner, um, he got, like, bad cops, and they're not doing their job. So he goes to him and tells him he wants real police working this case, and in fact, he asks for uh, Daniels, who put in his papers and was going to resign and go work in the private sector, um, so it looks like Burrell's is now going to force him to, uh, go work this case, um, or else, uh, Valchek will mess with him becoming police commissioner. Um, so it looks like the old crew is kind of coming together again and is going to, you know, uh, investigate, uh, Frank. Um, and speaking of Frank, um, so there's this great scene where, uh, one of his guys wants to quit. Um, but Frank uh, basically gives him some money, uh, tells him to go to the bar, and when he goes to the bar, he gets a handful of cash to keep him there. Um, so again, it seems like this guy has money to throw around, um, and I'm wondering how he's getting it all. Um, it's probably from you know his connection to uh, the Greek, who it seems like is the main criminal behind you know bringing the girls in and all and all this other stuff. Um, in this episode, Ziggy and Nick. Um, sell him some stolen cameras um, so he's getting all of this money together um, in order to buy politicians in fact he he the, the main one he has to buy now is Clay Davis the senator from season one um, to get this big project together that will employ all of his dock workers so it seems like that's his master plan here um, but we'll see how that goes especially with this new detail starting to investigate him um, but I'm wondering, you know, how deep does his connections go? Is he involved in some really bad stuff? Because he seems to have a lot of money to throw around, even though all of his workers are really struggling to get, you know, days of work with so little coming into the port. Um, beyond that, uh, in the prison, we have, uh, you know, D'Angelo has started using drugs. He's really upset that he has to do 20 years. Um, and Avon is trying to get him to, you know, stay positive and like stay strong so he doesn't you know turn into a rat or anything like that um and he sends stringer down to uh convince d'angelo's uh, girlfriend to come and visit him more and bring his son although we learn in this episode that stringer is, is having an affair with her um so as if he you know as if string didn't already fuck over d'angelo enough now he's sleeping with his girl although it seemed like uh d wasn't really into this girl he didn't really like her he liked that um the other girl he was with more um but yeah it's, it seems like string is uh you know kind of a scumbag kind of kind of fucking with this guy's girl but um you know w what can you expect but uh yeah so avon tells d'angelo to not use drugs um for the next few days um which perfectly lines up with the fact that he um he intentionally finds uh, the the security guard or the, the prison guard who is um, messing with uh, Weebay, and he finds out that this guy is bringing drugs into the prison uh, to make money. Um, and so he arranges to have the drugs that he brings in be poisoned. Uh, they're called Hot Shots, which is the, the title of this episode. Um, and it kills uh, quite a few inmates who are using the drugs. Um, and I presume he did this to you know, frame uh, this guy as a drug dealer and, you know, get him probably removed. Um, 
but if D'Angelo had been using that, he would have died. Um, and again, pretty callous that Avon just let all these prisoners uh, you know, be killed through these drugs. At the end of the episode, the last shot we see is him kind of just relaxing. You see he doesn't care about any of this. Um, so I'm wondering if that will you know, cause D'Angelo any problems because, again, he always was the more compassionate one of the group. I'm wondering if he might have a problem with the fact that Avon did this. Um, so we'll see where that goes, but... Um, yeah, pretty interesting. I, I'm hoping that all these storylines will come together in an interesting way. And um, you guys obviously know if you've seen it. But um, yeah, right now it seems pretty separate. But I think it will be pretty integral later on. So um, we'll see where that goes. Um, but thank you guys for watching. And uh, we'll check out the next episode soon. And we are back. Um, today we're looking at the episode Hard Cases. Um, now, in this episode, the uh, new detail to investigate Frank um, has been assembled. Um, so uh, Brells offers Daniels um, a promotion to major, and he gets to pick his own people if he agrees to stay on and lead this investigation, um, which he ultimately agrees to. Um, and he manages to get his old people um, assigned to the same case. Uh, so he gets uh, Freeman, he gets uh, Kima, he gets Herc, um, and he gets Prez again, who was already on the case. Um, the only two people he doesn't get um, are Carver, although they might bring him on later on, um, but they need to start making you know some progress before they can ask for more people. And he doesn't get McNulty. Um, so obviously Rawls hates McNulty and is keeping him there um, in the Marine in the Marine unit, um, keeping him away from any kind of real police work. But little does he know um, that McNulty is uh, doing his own investigation, which we'll talk about later. Um, so yeah, like I said, Daniels ultimately agrees to stay on um, as a police officer, but this pisses off his wife, um, who wanted him to you know become a a lawyer and leave this all behind um and we see the same thing with kima there's this really great scene where it's like uh, uh it's showing both scenes simultaneously where uh kima is having dinner with her girlfriend who's also pissed at her for um returning to uh, normal police work when she wanted her especially after being shot um to have a nice safe job um but kima just you know can't stay away from uh you know this type of like investigation like she wants to be where the action is she wants uh, excitement she doesn't want to just do paperwork so um yeah so the, the details all assembled and um we'll see where it goes next episode as they um actually start to investigate um the dock workers and speaking of investigating them um bunk uh freeman who is kind of he's kind of doing both cases i guess now because he's he's was assigned the um, the girls, the Jane Doe girls, and they're investigating the dock workers. Um, they don't get anywhere because the dock workers have like a code of silence, um, but they're starting to harass them and like they, they've honed in on their target. Like they know that uh, Horseface, funny name for a character, um, uh, know, they know that he was assigned to that um, shipping container um, and they know he had something to do with, um, you know, it with the, with the girls being there like he was involved somehow um so they're honing in even though they don't have any evidence yet um and like i said it, it's it's gonna be interesting because freeman is assigned to both cases now because he's, he's next episode he's gonna start to work on um the sabatka detail but he's also investigating the murder so i think that's how these two cases are going to kind of come together um but speaking of frank um kind of taking a different turn than when I first thought. Um, I thought he was like the main criminal element this season, um, but it's starting to seem like he's not um, this real bad guy. Um, you know, it just, he like when he learns that the girls were murdered, they weren't, it wasn't an accident like he thought it was, he, he gets really sick and he's like wor really worried about it. Um, and so I, I don't think that, maybe he is involved with with some super bad things i think it's um i think it might be the greek uh people that uh nick and ziggy are are working with um and in this episode they ask for um chemical shipments um they need like 
like tons of chemicals um which i'm wondering what they're going to use that for if it's uh for drugs um they, they wanted like acetone and some other stuff which i think they use that i mean, i need to refresh myself on a uh, breaking bad but uh maybe they're making drugs or maybe they're making a bomb or something who knows um but uh, yeah it seems like the greeks might be the real kind of uh you know criminal element because they're the ones who brought those girls in and they were gonna you know make millions off of prostitution so um that's probably i think who's going to be the main criminal element this season um but speaking of uh frank and ziggy or sorry nick and ziggy um more more funny scenes with ziggy this episode um he he's told after they make their deal uh selling the cameras to not buy anything and to not you know show off just like uh in goodfellas you know when they when they pull out the heist and all the all the criminals start buying cars and stuff um he goes and buys a two thousand dollar jacket which i'm like damn i mean this was back in the past but two thousand for a jacket is a lot at least to me even still today so i was like oh, that, that that's a fancy jacket um but uh more more funny scenes like he there's some guy who's like pissed at him um and then he puts a picture of his dick on his on his computer um so he's a, he's a funny character but uh man this guy's asking for trouble I, something bad's gonna happen to him like he's just breaking all the rules not listening to anything he's too wild um and so i i i can tell like something's gonna happen to him um, but Nick, uh, who, you know, again, is the more responsible of the two, um, you know, he's doing all this because he wants to, uh, move in with his baby mama and, you know, actually be together with his family. Um, so at least he has noble goals, but, um, I'm wondering, again, it, it seems like things are on the upswing for him, which usually means they're going to come crashing back down. So, uh, I'm worried some bad things might happen to Nick. Uh, who I just realized um, is a young porn stash from um, Orange is the New Black. Uh, I, I, that's where I first saw him, um, but it, it's, a, it's a young version of him. And I looked him up because I was like, I was wondering if he was in, in anything else too. Um, and he also narrated uh, the American Psycho audio uh, book, uh, which is what I used for um, the American Psycho video that I did. So um, I've been involved or i've been watching this guy or listening to him for a while now i didn't even know it um but uh, but a great actor and speaking of families um we've got a uh, mcnulty in this episode um trying to get back together with his ex-wife or i guess they're just separated um, but he signs a separation agreement kind of as a gesture of goodwill to be like he wants to get back together with her which um, I don't think is a good idea. I mean, it seemed like he had a great girl uh, with the um, attorney, the state's attorney that he's sleeping with. Like, she gets him. She gets, like, you know, police work and the criminal justice system. And it seemed like they'd be a good fit, whereas the wife, you know, kind of doesn't get that kind of stuff. She just wants, you know, her family safe and everything like that. So... Um, I'm thinking it's not a good move for him to try to get back together with her, but we'll see where that goes. Um, but again, he's investigating the, um, the Jane Doe girl on his own, pretty much. Um, he gets, he finds a letter and he gets it translated by this woman and, and learns the, the girl's name, which is, uh, I think it was Nadia. Um, but he doesn't really learn any like relevant information, but it might lead to something later on. And of course, the last uh, subplot we have going on is with um, Avon. Um, so it, again, last episode, he did the, the drugs. He tainted the drugs um, that were brought to the prison. And this is like some 5D chess. Um, so one, um, he got his you know nephew, D'Angelo, off the drugs. Um, but two, he's also going to rat out the um, guy who brought in the drugs um, in order to get time off of his sentence. Um, so instead of doing the full seven years, it looks like he's, he might even only do one year. Um, and on top of that, the guy who's bringing in the drugs uh, was the guy who was fucking with Weebay. Um, so man, he just took out all of those problems all at once. Um, so genius move on his part. Um, although his crew is kind of struggling. 
Um, they don't have the drug connection from New York anymore, and so they have to go to Atlanta. And the drugs that they're getting are, are much lower quality. And in order to even make money off of it, they have to dilute it even more. Um, so their stuff isn't worth anything. Um, so we'll, we'll see what happens, but it looks like they might have some trouble with product on the street. Um, but I've been talking for a long time on this episode, um, but uh, we'll, we'll stay tuned for the next one. Thanks. All right, we're back again, and we're looking at another episode. Uh, it's the same day, obviously, and now we're looking at the episode Undertow. Um, now, there's a couple of things happening this episode. Um, the first is that uh, Carver joins the investigative unit again. Um, so the whole team is back together, except for McNulty, of course. Um, and it was just, it gave me a really happy feeling to see the team together again. Uh, and I'm wondering if that's going to continue to be a trend, like these guys might form their own permanent unit. Um, the the uh, Burrell's uh, told Daniels that if he succeeds in this, um, he's going to get a permanent unit that he's going to be in charge of. Um, so I'm wondering and hoping maybe that um, all these people will continue to operate and they'll just keep investigating more crimes, um, but we'll see where that goes. Um, but uh, he joins the team and they are officially beginning their investigation into Frank. Um, they're looking at the drug angle because they're, they're wanting to see if he makes his money through drugs. Um, which it, I don't think that's actually how he makes his money, but um, they're doing some street busts, and it's funny in this case, it's actually Herc that gets to go purchase because um, the guys they're looking for this season are white, um, so he's working with them, um, and that's pretty funny to see that. We we do see that his son uh, Ziggy is mixed up in drugs in this episode. Um, he gets uh, he messes up the drugs again, which we've heard before that. He, he messes up the drugs a lot. Um, and he owes money to these serious drug dealers. Um, and they beat him up and take his car. Um, and Nick is unable to really help him. They, you know, they, they want the money. Um, so because of this, they decide to move forward with um, the deal with the Greeks. Uh, the, the Greeks want chemicals. Um, and they're, they're concerned what they want the chemicals for. Um, they're worried that it might be a bomb, um, but it actually, at least what we think so far, is that uh, they're using it to process cocaine, um, which is interesting. I'm, I'm not sure. I always thought that that's something that happened outside the country, like you process it in like South America or something like that, at least from Narcos. Um, but maybe they're processing it here in America. Uh, who knows? Or maybe they're going to ship it somewhere else. Um, but regardless, they decide to move forward with that. And even though Frank was um, against the idea of continuing to work with the Greeks, he wants uh, he, he needs money for the union. And so he ultimately agrees to go forward with this at triple the rate. Um, so that that's kind of the title undertow. Obviously, a, an ocean metaphor for the dock season, of course. Um, but he's he's kind of trapped in the undertow of um, you know the Greeks. So um, again, Frank's Frank's character is is taking a different turn than I thought. Um, it seems like he actually wanted to get out of you know working with the Greeks and doing the smuggling operation, but he's kind of forced to stay out of the union. Um, so I don't think he's necessarily this big bad guy. I think he's just doing what he has to do for his people, um, and he just kind of doesn't realize what he's getting into. Um, but we'll see where that goes. Um, but besides that, uh, finally, uh, McNulty tracks down Omar um, and gets him to testify, or he's going to testify in court, um, although they have to get him some clothes because obviously they can't have this guy, big scar down his face, uh, dressed the way he does, um, testifying in court and being credible. Um, so those are some pretty funny scenes. And um, one of the things I love about this show is uh, we're constantly, um, the world is like expanding. And um, in this episode, Nick uh, is looking for a house for his girlfriend in their old neighborhood. Um, and the real estate agent is uh, McNulty's ex-wife um, or separated wife or whatever they are. Um, and so I, I like that all these characters are kind of interacting with each other on the periphery. Um, again, it really gives the sense of like, this is a show about Baltimore. It's about the community and everyone 
kind of has these weird connections as you know when you live in a city like this you know i know that guy through this guy over here and stuff like that so um it's it's really cool to see that um although uh he doesn't get the house because it's being priced out of his range it's it's being gentrified basically the neighborhood um which you know they can't afford to to, to buy that house anymore um, so a little sad when it comes to that but um uh, Bunk and Freeman are continuing their investigation and like I guess last episode they are folding the cases into each other or at least they're trying to um, Daniels does not want to take on all these murders because he thinks they're unsolvable um, but they've agreed to kind of share information and resources so I do think ultimately um, it's going to come together like this and they're going to end up going after the Greek who is um, the kind of the mysterious criminal guy um, at the heart of uh, what's going on at the docks. Um, besides that, though, uh, we have uh, Stringer. Uh, we're getting uh, another look into his um, extracurricular activities. So um, he, he goes to community college that we saw last season, um, and he's taking economics class. He's doing really well in there. Um, and he actually gets some advice on how to run his drug empire um, through his economics professor. So he, he learns that he needs to rebrand the drugs because they're so weak right now that they're not worth anything. But if they rebrand them, it buys them time while the, the drug addicts basically figure out that it's shit again. Um, so it's cool that that element is coming into his world and like actually helping him in his you know criminal life. Um, but again, uh, we're seeing conflict between D'Angelo and Avon. Um, D'Angelo, after everything he went through last season, doesn't trust these guys, quite rightfully so. I mean, Stringer sleeping with um, his baby mama. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But it looks like Avon's starting to lose patience with D'Angelo and might be done with him. So I'm wondering if they might just, you know, say he's a loose end and, and get rid of him. Although his sister you know, obviously loves her son and doesn't want that to happen to him. So she might have a problem with that. And she's running their money right now, I believe. So um, we'll see where that goes. Um, but that pretty much uh, is the episode. So um, we'll check out the next one soon. Man, oh man, we've got an interesting one this time. Um, so there's, I, I feel like I always say there's a few things going on in this episode. Um, but really, there are, I think, three key things happening in here that I want to talk about. Um, so the first uh, is with McNulty and his wife. Um, he wants to get back together with her. Um, they've been separated for a while. And he is, is finally ready to kind of move on from police work. You know, he's finished all of his business. And now he's content to just be a um, boat police um, if he can instead be with his uh, ex-wife. Um, so again, we're, we're seeing him, you know, tr compromising his usual character. Um, you know, the hard drinking, the obsessed with the case um, kind of mentality he has. Um, and he really wants to, to be with his ex-wife again. Um, and she does sleep with him in this episode, but afterwards uh, she tells him he has to leave. Um, because she doesn't want to get back together. Um, so I'm wondering what's going to happen with that. Is he is this going to make him kind of go back and, you know, really dig into the case because he's got nothing else in his life? Or maybe he'll, you know, keep trying to pursue his ex-wife? Um, we'll see. But I kind of think it's the first one. Um, because just knowing McNulty, um, I don't think he's ever going to be satisfied um, until he solves this case. Um he really wanted to put a name on the dead girl, but uh, he wasn't able to. He just wasn't able to find it. Um, so she does go to the mass grave where all the Jane Does go. Um, but maybe he'll figure out the name during this case. Um, so that's the first uh, you know storyline happening. Um, the second is uh, with Nick and Ziggy. Um, so Nick goes to the Greeks and he asks for help. Um, with the problem that they're having with, uh, I think his name is Cheese, the, the drug dealer that Ziggy fucked up with. Um, and he's actually connected to uh, Proposition Joe from season one. Um, so they're bringing that character back again. Um, and luckily they know, um, I think he's is he, is he Ukrainian or Russian, um, but they know this guy Serge. 
and he's kind of respected amongst their you know their crew or whatever um so he's able to sort it out and prop joe pace with a car that they burned um and the 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 guys end up selling them the stolen chemicals that they got um now the Greeks offer them to either pay them in cash or pay them in way more money, but in heroin. Um, and so Nikki is ultimately tempted to go into the to the drug trade. So he gets half cash, half drugs. Um, so they're going to make way more money on this, but this is, of course, more dangerous. Um, and Nick was a- avoiding being involved in drugs because he knows it's a dangerous game. Um, but the money and the you know the greed has just kind of overcome him. And so um, he makes this deal. And I, I'm thinking that Ziggy's going to fuck it up. Because, um, again, Ziggy's always like, I can run the package. I, even though he messed it up like three times now, um, I think he's going to try to do something. Because he's just crazy, man. He, uh, like at the bar, he's like burning the money and smoke with a $100 bill, smoking. He just doesn't give a shit. He's really funny. I like him a lot. Um, and I have a feeling that something bad's going to happen to him. He's going to wind up in a stupid situation um but i hope he doesn't die because i i actually really do i think he's funny um and it seems like he's a good character at his heart he's just kind of a messed up kid um but speaking of good kids who bad things happen to um we are tragically saying goodbye to d'angelo in this episode at least i think so i think he's dead by the end of this um but stringer um, hire someone to uh, basically arrange a hit in the prison and kill D'Angelo. Um, D'Angelo has been refusing to uh, you know, work with the Barksdale crew. Um, he doesn't want his time shaved off. He just wants nothing to do with them. Which I was a little confused about why Stringer would want him dead. And it seems like he's doing this on his own. Um, I don't think Avon knows. I mean, Avon was talking like, you know, he was disappointed with D'Angelo not, you know, being friendly to him. Um, but I don't think he would go so far as to have this guy killed. I mean, he wasn't really threatening their organization. He wasn't going to, like, rat. Or maybe they thought he would rat in the future if he doesn't work with them. Um, but I'm wondering, you know, why Stringer did this. Maybe he wants to be with uh, D'Angelo's girl. Um, but I kind of don't think that's like Stringer. I think Stringer thinks, you know, further ahead than that. Um, doesn't let his emotions, you know, or his dick make his decisions for him. He seems smarter than that. Um, so I, I am thinking, like, it's either another reason or it's because he thinks D will rat eventually. Um, uh, but they send this guy into the prison and they, he, he chokes him out. Um, and then he, uh, like, makes it look like a suicide. And he, like, sticks his hand in his pants. I guess it's, like, one of those things where... Um, like David Carradine or whatever, where they, they choke themselves while they jerk off or something. Um, but that's the the explanation they're going to give, that D committed suicide, which um, I don't know if people will believe that. Uh, you know, he was telling his mother earlier that he's going to go his own way, but maybe they'll spin it like he was depressed and that's why he wasn't, um, you know, talking with Avon and stuff like that. I don't know. Um, and I'm really wondering if Avon is involved, but I kind of think he's not. Um, but yeah, sad to see him go. I mean, he, he, he just went out in a really, not anticlimactic, but just in a surprising way. Um, you'd think he would have more of an arc, but, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, HBO, they, they'll randomly kill off characters. Um, and yeah, he seemed like a lost soul, but, um, yeah, who knows? But uh, besides that, um, not too much else going on in this episode. They're continuing to get more information, but they don't really have a connection. They know that um, Sabatka is not into drugs, but now they're starting to look at smuggling. So I think next episode, we're really going to see them kind of focus in on that aspect. And they will probably discover the connection um, to the Greeks um, and realize what's going on. Um, at least I think so. Um Besides that, there was a funny scene where Bunk was, you know, hung over and, like, puking. And, um, you know, he, he's, he's hitting the sauce pretty hard lately. Um, but, yeah, other than that, not too much going on. Kima, uh, there was a scene where her girlfriend didn't want her to go to a strip club without her. Um, and so she goes with them on this police work, which, uh, I guess, is a funny scene. Um, but, yeah, not too much going on on the detective side. They're just gathering information right now. 
Um, and I will say the, the investigation has kind of been the weakest part um, just because it, it seems like Spock is not, you know, too tied up in anything. I think they're eventually going to realize that and then go after the Greeks. Um, but the, yeah, the investigation part has been much weaker than, you know, season one. Um, but who knows, maybe it'll pick up in the next episode and, uh, we'll check it out soon. Uh, talk to you then. All right. So I'm checking my footage and I realized that, um, I never talked about, uh, the trial. Um, this is a few days later when I'm realizing this, but, um, I guess I was just, uh, too focused on D's death. Um, it totally slipped my mind. Um, and it's probably because it's not super impactful to the plot. Um, it's the trial of Bird uh, for the uh, murder of um, the state's witness, uh, William Gant, I think. Um, but uh, this is a very uh, important scene in terms of uh, the character of Omar. Um, we're getting uh, a, a really good sense into like who he is. Um, he agrees to testify against Bird, um, and even though uh, they gave him a check to buy some clothes with, all he bought was a tie. So um, he looks ridiculous, but um, very charming. He's uh, you know just being very honest about who he is, you know what he does, and um, the jury I think was really impressed by it. Um, and when the uh, defense attorney um, Levi, I think his name is, um, when he's trying to like you know, criticize Omar and bring him down, bring his credibility down. Um, he just owns him. He just, uh, you know, uh, the, the defense attorney is saying he's a parasite who, you know, uses the money from drug dealers. And then he, Omar's just like, yeah, but so do you do that too. Um, you know, it's all part of the same game. Um, and so, yeah, completely owned him. Um, and then Bird rightfully gets convicted, even though technically I think Omar was lying, um, or at least it's implied that he didn't actually see Bird do it, although other people did, so it doesn't really matter. Um, but uh, yeah, great, great scene, um, great character work from there. Um, and it's really satisfying to see that judge, you know, smack Levi down at the end and say like, Oh yeah, your your client's going to jail for the rest of his life um, for killing a state's witness. Um, so yeah, great scene. The only thing I guess I could criticize is um, I watch a lot of Legal Eagle, um, and just having watched that, I know that I don't think he's allowed to just be like, "You are a parasite. You are scum who prowls the street." Like you can't just you have to ask questions. That's all you can do. You're not allowed to like preach to the jury. Um, so I think if he ever reviewed that scene, he'd have a problem with that. Um, but I mean, still just, just some great dialogue there. Um, but regardless, we'll check out the next episode. So something weird happened last night. Um, I was watching an episode pretty late. That's when I recorded the last episode. Um, and then when I went to bed, I had a dream about The Wire. Um, and it's pretty funny. I dreamed that um, uh, Nick and Ziggy were selling drugs and Ziggy fucked up the package again. Um, so maybe that's going to happen. Um, but as you can tell, I've kind of got Wire on the brain. Um, and th that is something I thought might happen because um, Ziggy was you know, want, wanting to be involved in the drugs, even though Nick, you know, doesn't want him to anymore. So I'm worried that he might inject himself, um, you know, into the trade, fuck it up again, and then they're going to incur the wrath of um, either the Greeks or Proposition Joe or someone. Um, so who knows? It didn't happen in this episode, but maybe it'll happen in the future. Um, but in this episode, uh, we are taking a look at uh, the episode Backwash, um, I'll admit, this is the first episode I was really, like, not a big fan of in the sense that, like, it felt like nothing really happened. Um, you know, some of the earlier episodes this season are, are kind of like that as well. Um, but this one really felt kind of, man, like, nothing really moved forward. Um, now, things definitely did move forward um, in the investigation, like... Uh, Kima and Prez have found where the girls are staying. Um, they've uh, they they set up this like <clears throat> sting to 
uh, find uh, where the shipping containers are going. So they, they now know the warehouse um, that uh, they are, whenever they smuggle cargo off the ships, uh, they take it to this warehouse. So they know that. Um, and Herc and uh, Carver um, figured out that um, Nick is uh, dealing drugs. Um, they kind of just found out an accident. Um, so, so progress has been made, and it seems like they're going to really connect the dots. Um, but I feel like I've been saying that every episode, and it still feels like almost three separate investigations happening. It doesn't feel cohesive. I think it will next episode because um, at the end of this one, uh, Daniel said that uh, you know he's going to take the murders. Um, so it seems like it's all going to come together. Um, but yeah, this is the first one I was like, yeah, nothing, nothing really happened in this one. Um, and I think that's why people don't like this season as much. It just feels really disconnected. It doesn't feel like it's going anywhere yet. Um, but maybe they'll pick it all up at the end. Um, but uh, regardless, um, the, the major things that happen in this episode, are, like I said, um, they make those police investigations. Um, it's pretty funny. Herc and Carver, uh, they buy this very expensive wire um, and they, it ends up, uh, they put it in a tennis ball and then the tennis ball ends up like getting run over by a car and they are now out like $1,200, which is a lot, um, especially on a cop's salary. Um, <clears throat> so we'll, we'll see if uh, they manage to get their money back. Um, they are saying something like, they're going to claim to be working with an informant to get like, I guess the police will cover the cost or something. Um, but they're lying. And, you know, Daniels knows that Carver has lied to him before. So I think he's going to be suspicious. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But it seems like just kind of a humorous subplot. Um, beyond that, like I said, Daniels is going to take the murders, which causes some friction with um, his wife because um, she's tired of him kind of compromising his career to do the right thing. Um, ultimately, uh, Lester convinces Daniels that, you know, doing the right thing, doing the right police work is the most important thing, regardless of how it affects his career. Um, and so, yeah, Daniels is again compromising and he might uh, not come out um, with the promotion that he wants if he takes on these cases. Um, so we're, we're always seeing that... Um, challenge of do i do the right thing or do i do the smart thing um and we're seeing that across a lot of characters um uh, we're also seeing that in the uh, barksdale crew um you know with stringer uh he he had d killed um last episode and avon we, we learned had nothing to do with it um he thinks it's a suicide and he's pretty torn up about it um because you know d was his nephew um and his mom is really torn torn up about it and um you know avon is just kind of or not avon sorry stringer um is just kind of you know acting like he's sad but of course he's the one who did it um and we'll we'll see what he's what he's up to i don't know exactly why he had d killed um, like I said before, maybe he thought D would rat on him. In fact, Weebay says the same thing. You know, he's like, if he got tired of doing it in 20 years, he might decide to rat on Avon. Um, so maybe that's what uh, he was thinking. But um, this is the first time we start to see a little bit of a rift between uh, Stringer and Avon. Um, because Proposition Joe um, wanted to sell drugs in the towers um, because the Barksdale crew doesn't have... They have really shitty drugs. They, um, but the the East Side people, they have the good stuff. So um, Stringer's looking at it like this could be a good deal for them um, in terms of you know being able to survive. Um, but Avon doesn't want to do it because you know he doesn't want to lose territory. Um, he's thinking all about you know just pride and you know the, the, all, all their accomplishments. So. Um, we're seeing a rift between the pragmatic Stringer and the more, you know, kind of emotional Avon. Um, so we'll see if that maybe, you know, causes some friction between the two. Like we, we've seen Stringer is going to perfectly fine to go off on his own and do his own thing. Um, so maybe he might make a move against Avon. Uh, we'll see where that goes. But um, that's pretty much the only major things happening this episode. Um the, the only other thing is like, there was a quick scene of McNulty. He wasn't, he was barely in this one. Um, but there's a quick scene of him, you know, trying to get back together with his ex-wife. And she says she can't trust him. Doesn't seem like it's going anywhere. Um, 
But again, I, I don't think that relationship's going to work out, even if she takes him back. I think he's going to do the same thing as he always does. He's like, put the case first. Um, maybe he might cheat again with the state's attorney. Who knows? He's, he doesn't seem like a guy in control of himself, even though he wants to be. Um, so that is pretty much what's happening. The only other thing I can think of now is um, Sabatka's trying to maintain control of the union, even though his term is, is, is almost over. Um, and it's looking like they they won't get everything they wanted from the lobbying. Um, they wanted the canal dredged, uh, but they might only get a small little project that employs a few people. And on top of that, um, there is new technology that's going to make um, the, are they called stevedores? The dock workers. It's going to make them obsolete, like robots are going to replace them all, which, um, you know, that definitely happens. Um and so, yeah, it's looking like his whole way of life might come crashing down. Um, and he's desperately trying to maintain control. Um, so I, I think we're going to see some conflict, you know, within the union. And then as he gets more and more desperate, um, I got to imagine he's going to, like, maybe try to steal more or do whatever to raise more money to, you know, make sure his people stay employed. Um but yeah, that is uh, the episode. Um, like I said, not not the best episode for me personally, uh, but maybe it'll pick up next one. So stay tuned for that. Thanks. All right, so we're back with another episode. Today we're looking at uh, Duck and Cover, uh, which is a funny title because um, not only is are, are the stevedores you know, ducking for cover now that they know the police are after them, um, but Ziggy has a duck, and <laughs> I love Ziggy so much. He's so funny. Um, but, uh, yeah, in this episode, um, we have the investigation actually really moving forward um so like i said last episode it was it was really pretty much set up before this um but now they uh really have some solid information so they're able to prove that um you know nick is involved with drugs they're able to connect uh to the warehouse to the port they have wiretaps in place they have everything um and now they're just trying to get all the information that they need to make a prosecution um so it, it, it happens in an interesting way. So they, they tail one of the um, uh, shipping containers to the warehouse, um, but Frank notices that something's wrong, um, and he purposely sends a clean container as a decoy um, so that they don't catch them with the contraband because he realizes that um, because his phone line is still on, even though he didn't pay his bill, he realizes the police are wiretapping his phone, and he sees uh, Greg's on the dock, um, so he, he knows what's going on. Um, and so he sends his clean container, um, but funny enough, it ends up working badly for them in the sense that uh, when the guy gets the clean container, he calls the boss. So now they have the boss's number, um, even though it's 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 not the boss, it's the second-in-command guy, the Greek guy. Um, but uh, the... Uh, fr uh, Frank meets with the Greek finally. He finally agrees to meet with him. Um, and uh, they agree to continue to send them clean containers um, to kind of ward off suspicion. Um, but it, it looks like there's some tension between the two of them um, now that the police are involved and they can't get them the, you know, the illegal goods that they want. So even though it was kind of on the surface level of friendly conversation, it seems like um, I think some things are going to boil over here as the Greeks, um, you know, really don't have a use for the, the union guys unless they can get them, you know, their, their legal goods. Um, so on one level that's happening, um, McNulty finally uh, joins the investigation. Um, you know, things did not work out with his ex-wife as, you know, we kind of clearly assumed it wouldn't. Um, and so Daniels is able to, uh, you know, convince Rawls to let him come back um, because uh, Rawls owes him for taking the 14 murders. Um, so McNulty is finally where he's supposed to be. He's on the detail again. Um, and uh, some interesting things happen to McNulty this episode. In the beginning, he gets really drunk. Um, and then he ends up having a one-night stand with a waitress. Kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, I don't... I mean, I, McNulty's a good-looking guy, but I don't know. He just... He was drunk and bleeding, and I guess that turned on the waitress or whatever. But uh, So he has a one-night stand with her. And then at the end of the episode, it looks like 
he might sleep with um I, I am forgetting her name. Um, Russell's, I think I think her name is. Um, the new cop from the docks that they have. Um, but uh, ultimately he decides not to do it because she has kids. Um, so yeah, he's a, he's kind of a horn dog. Um, and in this episode too, they even say you know, it takes a whore to catch a whore. Um, so they're going to have McNulty uh, kind of go after the hookers and um, see if he can get a lead that way. So he might end up sleeping with some some of those uh, escorts, which um, I don't know how that's going to work with the fact that he's also feeling guilt or for not finding out that first girl's name. Um, so maybe he'll you know develop a relationship or something with one of these women. Um, I don't know. We'll see where it goes. But um, yeah, he's, he was in kind of a dark place before he joined the detail. Um, that's happening. Um, the only other major thing happening is um, the Barksdale crew again is is struggling to um, you know keep their territory because they have no drugs or at least no good drugs to sell. Um, and some of Prop Joe's guys are kind of muscling in on their territory. Um, and luckily, Bodhi takes the initiative and kind of kicks them off. Um, but they admit that there's going to be some retaliation. So I'm um, wondering what's going to happen with that. This is the first episode, too. We didn't see anything of Avon or uh, Stringer. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what's happening. But I think they're in a bad spot. I think, um, you know, their crew is, is going to have to, you know, rally if they want to survive. Um, they haven't really been a force this season. Um, so I'm wondering if maybe they're going to take this season to kind of, you know, be weakened a little bit. And then maybe next season, or maybe at the end of this season, who knows, they're going to come back stronger than ever. Um, but I, I don't think we're done with the, the Barksdale crew yet. Um, but we'll see. Um, but that is pretty much the major things happening in this episode. Thanks for watching, and uh, we'll stay tuned for the next episode coming soon. All right, we're back with another episode. Um, today we're looking at uh, Stray Rounds, I think the episode's called. Um, and definitely at the start of this episode, uh, we deal with Stray Rounds. Um, Bodhi and his crew are attacked by the um, drug dealers that they drove off last episode. Um, and there's a firefight and they're all just shooting at each other. Um, and one of the Stray Rounds ends up going through a window and it kills this nine-year-old kid. Um, which is definitely a tragedy, and uh, this, you know, because of the because of the publicity of it, um, the police are finally kind of forced to act, and so they go in there and they start making arrests, and they they're really trying to find out who did it. Um, but again, this is all like publicity motivated. Um, they're just doing it because you know it looks bad on them if they let a kid get murdered and nothing happens. Um, and it's interesting. There's. I don't know what his name is or what his rank is, but they have this um, like commander or something like that, uh, this high-ranking police officer um, come down there. Um, and I don't know what it is, but it kind of just seemed like he's going to be a character moving forward. Um, I don't know why I noticed that. Like, There's not too many like scenes with him, um, but it just seemed like, I don't know, they just had this air like, oh, okay, this character is going to stick around. Um, so I'm wondering if that's it. It's the black, um, you know, commander, lieutenant, whatever the whatever the rank is. Um, it's the one who comes down from D.C. Uh, he was with um, Burrell's getting funding or something like that. Um, but I don't know. Just something about his character seemed like, like they're going to keep him around. Um, but we'll see if I'm wrong about that. Um, but uh, the investigation into this kid's murder... Um, is disrupting the drug trade even more, which is really bad for the Barksdale crew because they're just hanging on by a thread as it is. Um, and Stringer, you know, he, he tells Bodhi that one, he messed up on this, um, but two, when he tells him to get rid of the guns, uh, Bodhi throws it over the bridge, but it lands on a boat that happened to just be uh, driving by or, or sailing by, um, and they have the guns now, so that's bad too. Um, I don't think they were able to connect it to Bodhi. Um, he, he knew better than to, um, you know, say anything to the cops. Um, but still, he's been fucking up lately, so I'm wondering if Stringer might get rid of him. Uh, you know, he tends to get rid of people at the drop of a hat if they are not useful to him anymore. Uh, so we'll see where it goes with him. Um, 
But because of this, uh, Stringer decides, you know, he has to make the deal with um, Prop Joe and let him sell in the towers. Um, he tries to get um, Avon to agree. He sends uh, Bree to go talk to Avon, um, but uh, she's not successful. Avon still doesn't want to deal with Prop Joe. And instead, he arranges for um, this hitman, uh, Brother Muzo, I think the character's name is. Um, he is like this really feared, um, you know, hitman muscle guy. Um, he's killed a lot of people. And um, he arrives at the end of the episode um, dressed in a uh, suit. So um, definitely different than the usual gangbangers that we've seen um, in the Barksdale crew. Um, and... I don't know what it is about this guy, but he looked like, okay, I can see that why he's so scary. So um, I think that that's going to throw a wrench into Stringer's plans to work with Prop Joe. Um, I think there could be consequences for him. Favon finds out. Um, but yeah, we'll see what happens moving forward. Um, but that's pretty much what's happening on that end. Um, on the police investigation side, um, they are making some serious headway. They were set back by the fact that the um, the stevedores have you know changed up their method and the Greeks have changed up their method, um, but luckily they're able to you know continue the wiretap and they find out that um, all all these elements are connected. So like um, they're making head <coughs> they're making headway. Excuse me on the um, on the prostitution side <laughs> and a really really funny scene. Um, so McNulty, uh, pretends to be this, uh, British John so he can, you know, hire the prostitute, which I, I think the actor who plays McNulty is actually British in real life because, um, he's going to be on the crown. Um, he's going to play, uh, Prince Charles. So I, I think he's actually British. So, um, but he was, he was doing an intentionally bad British accent, I think to, you know, just to, to play into the role. Um, but they send him um, into the brothel, um, and he he's not able to get the cops in in time. So he ends up they, they end up like walking in on him having sex with the prostitute. So uh, McNulty gets laid a lot in this show. <laughs> um, so I guess he took one in the line of duty. Um, but uh, they have that going on. So they're they're making busts there, seeing if if it stirs up anything. Um, they get a line on the uh, the boss man, or at least who they think's the boss man. Um, it's uh, is it Spiros? I think his name is. It's not the Greek, the the top. Um, it's his you know second in command. So they've tapped his phone. Um, so they they have that information now. They've been listening to the uh, the Russian guy or the Ukrainian guy, um, and so yeah, they're really starting to piece some information together here. And they've kind of honed in on the Greeks. However, the Greeks have their own, um, you know, line in on this police investigation because they have an FBI agent working for them. And when uh, McNulty goes to the FBI for more information, um, this this agent tips them off that they're looking into him. Um, so I don't know what their relationship is. Um, they did give him information about um, a big drug deal coming in from the Colombians. It was a you know two birds with one stone. The Colombians had not been paying them their money, and this hurt them. And then they also rewarded this guy for his information. So uh, maybe they just bought this FBI agent or something like that, or maybe he's a part of this organization. Who knows? Um, but the Greeks have some like deep connections to, to even in the FBI, which is um, pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, the police are making their own headway, but I think that the Greeks are prepared for them. Um, I don't think it's going to be as easy as it was on the Barksdale thing with these Greek guys. Um, and it wasn't even easy on the Barksdale thing. So um, we'll see where that goes. But the investigation is really starting to get cooking. Um, and uh, besides that, uh, we have some more stuff going on with the uh, dock workers. So um, the, the, the union um, is having an election coming up. And like I said... Um, Frank, you know, wants to be the treasurer or whatever for another year um, so he can get the um, dredging through Congress. Um, he's, I think he's gotten the pier open. I think that's what they were celebrating. Um, so they've accomplished some things, but 
um, the the black guys who work in a union want one of theirs, and it's like a turn based system that they have. Um, so uh, I, I could see some conflict coming in the union because I don't think Frank wants to go at that position. I think it's too important to him. Um, so we'll see what happens there. But um, beyond just that, uh, Nick is continuing to deal drugs. Um, he's buying more and more drugs from White Mike now. Um, and Ziggy has his own little operation going. He's going to steal some cars and sell it directly to the Greeks. Um, and knowing Ziggy, I think he's going to fuck it up. Um, so um, I don't think that's going to go well. And this might um, end badly for him if, you know, pretty much everything he tries, he fucks up. He even killed a duck from feeding it too much alcohol. Um, so, yeah, we'll see where that goes. But um, like I said, things are really starting to get cooking here. Um, I think things are going to take off uh, next episode. Um, so we'll see. Stay tuned for that. Well, we're now in full screen. Um, I figured out the settings on how to change that. Um, so I think this will probably look better from now on. Um, and you might notice a slightly different angle here. Um, I got a new monitor and it's a little bit taller than the previous one was. So the webcam at the top is at a different angle. Um, but otherwise, it's the same exact thing. We're talking about The Wire. Um, today, we're looking at the 10th episode of Season 2, I believe, um, called Storm Warnings. Um, now, this episode uh, has a very dramatic moment. Um, so, uh, previously, Ziggy had set up a deal on his own without Nick's involvement um, to steal some uh, Mercedes cars and sell them to the Greek at the warehouse. Um, which he does, he gets the cars shipped to him, um, but the Greek uh, does not pay him the full amount. Um, again, he sees Ziggy as kind of an idiot, um, a weakling who can't do anything, um, and so he feels confident to rip him off. Um, but in this case, it doesn't work out because Ziggy is tired of being kicked around, he's tired of being treated like he's an idiot, and he goes into his car, gets a gun, comes back in and kills that guy and another uh, kid. Uh, thereby confirming that he is an idiot, of course, because um, he doesn't flee this scene. He breaks down crying, um, and the police arrive and arrest him. He signs a confession. They've got the gun. I'm sure they've got witnesses. Um, so it's it's a done deal for Ziggy. He's getting convicted of this murder, or this double murder, actually, um, which really messes up um, the plans with the Greeks and the Union um, because, obviously, Frank is very distraught to learn you know, that his son is now a murderer. He's got his own kind of conflict going on with, um, he wants to continue to run for treasurer of the union, despite the fact that he agreed to let um, another uh, black union officer um, take the position, they, they, they trade it. Um, so he's got that, he's got that going on now. Um, but beyond that too, I mean, Nick's really devastated to learn that, you know, his favorite cousin um, is now going away for murder. Um, so he's really beaten up about that. Um, and the Greeks, of course, uh, now have attention on them, and so they decide to um, get rid of everything. So <clears throat> I'll, I'll touch on this more later, but um, they find out from their uh, FBI informant, the man they have, you know, in the FBI, um, they find out that, uh, you know, the police are looking into them. So they throw away their cell phones, they get rid of the drugs and the stolen equipment at the warehouse. Um, and so they're, they're getting rid of everything, um, cleaning house, just like last season. Um, and so the police are not able to get there in time. They're like typing their warrants and they're getting ready to go kick in doors. Um, but the Greeks are just kind of one step ahead of them. Um, so we'll see where that goes. We'll see if they are managed to get any information from, you know, this raid upcoming. Um, but beyond just that, we have, um, you know, conflicts within the police themselves. Um, so Valchek is, again, still pissed off that um, uh, Sabatka is not the main target anymore. And so he goes to the feds, hoping that they'll, you know, focus on Sabatka. And they do agree to take over the case, um, but they decide to work with um, Daniels and, and the detail. Um, and they decide to continue to pursue the Greeks, too. Uh, which pisses off Valchek because, again, he just wanted, um, you know, his old rival Sabatka taken care of. Um, so uh, he, when he learns that he's not going to get what he wants, he orders Prez to leave the detail and come back with him, starts talking down to him, and then Prez finally stands up for himself and punches Valchek in the face. 
um, which is pretty satisfying to see because this guy is an asshole. Um, but, uh, you know, it's bad for him because he's a major. So um, he's most likely going to face, you know, consequences for this. He might lose his job over it. Um, we'll see what happens because the dude is his father-in-law. Um, but, you know, we, we, we do know now that, um, you know, Prez is good police and he wants to do the right thing. He's tired of, you know, compromising, um, just like all the other cops we see. So um, I hope he doesn't lose his badge or anything like that because I think he's good police and I think he's really good for this investigation. Um, beyond just that, we have some conflict brewing with uh, Kima and her... I don't know if she's wife or girlfriend or whatever, but um, she's pregnant with their child. So they got artificially inseminated. Um, and so they're going to have a baby. But Kima is not super happy about this, actually. She, again, we, we know her. She wants to be out on the street. She, want, she loves the excitement. Um, she wants to be kicking down doors and doing dangerous police work. Um, but uh, the wife or girlfriend or whatever doesn't want her to be involved in this stuff because she wants her safe. I mean, she was already shot once. Um, so, and Kim is worried that, you know, becoming a mother, she won't be able to do the stuff she loves anymore. Um, and she ends up kind of talking with, um, I always forget her name, is it Russell's? The, the rookie cop they have now, how she balances her life as a mother versus a cop. Um, so we'll see where that goes, but I could see some domestic trouble on the horizon for Kima here. Um, beyond just that, though, um, we have uh, the introduction of uh, Brother Muzo, um, I believe his name is, um, who, again, last episode, um, Avon hired this guy to be their muscle and keep the towers away from the east side, uh, you know, drug dealers. Um, so even though Stringer invited them onto th their turf, um, he had to keep it secret from Avon, and now Avon has his own man there, um, and he drives off Cheese, who is the, uh, he's the drug dealer that Ziggy got involved with. So, again, I love how all these characters are all involved with each other. Um, uh, but he shoots, uh, Proposition, uh, he shoots, uh, Cheese, uh, and tells him to get lost, who goes back to Prop Joe, uh, and Prop Joe, um, wants to organize a sit down between Omar and Stringer um, with I think the intention is that they might get Omar to kill uh, Brother Muzo. Um, so we'll see where that goes because this guy seems dangerous. Um, he reminds me of uh, the guy from Boardwalk Empire which I've not seen the whole series like I, I haven't seen it all the way through but I've seen a lot of clips of the show and he reminds me of uh, Narcissus uh, from that show. Just, um, he's a gangster, but he's like really educated, um, wears a suit, talks, you know, properly. Um, and so, uh, yeah, definitely seems like Stringer too, a different class of criminal than the one we're used to dealing with, um, you know, in the ghetto and with, with the drugs. So um, we'll see where this character goes. It's pretty interesting. Um, but that is what happened in this episode. Um, again, I, I, I feel like now it's starting to take off. I think it had a very slow start this season. And I think maybe if we had gotten to this point quicker, more people would have liked this season. But definitely it seems like, you know, the wheels are turning and the police are kind of honing in on their prey. Um, so I hope to get another pretty exciting episode here next episode. Um, but stay tuned for that and we'll talk about that soon. All right, so we're back again with another episode, and today we're looking at the uh, second to last episode of season two, I believe, um, Bad Dreams. Now, the police finally uh, serve their warrants and they make their arrests. Uh, they end up getting some members of the Greeks organization, um, but because of the fact that um, Landsman made the arrest of Ziggy and didn't tell them, um, they were able to go to the warehouse and clean everything up. So they didn't get any real evidence. Um, they're able to make some arrests, um, but they're not able to get um, the information leading to who the boss is. Um, now they end up trying to uh, follow um, Spiros. I don't know, I can't pronounce his last name, but um, <clears throat> they end up following him um, and they, they end up losing him um, and they, they mistake his lawyer for the real boss. It's, it's funny, the Greek actually walks right past them, but because they don't know who he is, they don't notice. 
Um, and so they're they're on to them. They're they're following the lead, um, but they don't have any real information. And all the key players refuse to talk. Um, so they decide to offer Frank um, a deal. So uh, Frank was arrested too, as was Horseface, um, and he is now disgraced with the union. Um, all his political connections dried up because of the profile he now has. Um, so his dream of the peer is done. Uh, they're not going to vote for it. Um, so they offer Frank a way out. They offer him if he'll agree to testify and share his information about the Greeks. Um, they'll let Nikki go. Uh, Ziggy will get moved to like a minimum security prison and, and he'll get to go free too. Uh, Frank. So he he's he's down to testify. He's down to admit what he knows. Um, they say though he has to get a lawyer, um, and they'll they'll do it the next day. And in between that time, um, Spiros uh, goes to Nick and offers uh, to help their family. So um, they will get Ziggy's um, the witness to his murder. They'll get him to lie and say it was self defense. Um, they, I think they're, they were offering to take Nick away, um, with a fake passport and get him out of the U.S. so he won't get arrested. Um, and so they want, all they want in exchange is they want, uh, Frank to remain quiet. Um, and so he agrees to meet with them, um, although he tells Nick that he doesn't want him there because he doesn't want him involved with the Greeks anymore, um, after he learned that Nick was dealing heroin this whole time. But unfortunately, um, the FBI agent that the Greeks have planted informs them that um, he can see in the computer files that Frank uh, met with the police and is testifying. So they're aware of that fact. So as the episode ends, it looks like uh, they're going to kill Frank, which I'm very sad about. And in the middle of this season, I started to really question, you know, why are we following Frank? Um, he's not the main criminal force. And it just seemed like kind of a distraction. Like if the Greeks were going to be the real criminals, um, I wanted to maybe follow them more and learn more about them. But I'm starting to get why we focused on Frank and the Union so much, which is, um, you know, they're, they're working men. They're, they're poor. Um, their way of life is evaporating. And we're seeing the tragedy of what's happening on the dock. Like, Economically, um, the union is falling out of favor. They don't have the power they have anymore. Uh, and more so than that, their just lifestyle is going away. And there's this, um, you know, very, very sad tragedy to, you know, this way of life disappearing in America. He's got a great quote where he says, um, we used to make shit here. Now we just take money out of each other's pockets. Um, and it's a great metaphor for the city of Baltimore, I assume, but also just America in general. So I, I get why we focus on him. Um, I still think they could have done a better job maybe this season of upping the stakes because it, it kind of felt like nothing was on the line for a long time. Um, even still, the Greeks seem very, very reasonable. Um, despite the fact that they kill that guy you know, in, in the first few episodes, they're willing to constantly give the Union chance after chance even though they keep fucking up. Um, so it kind of undercuts their brutality a little bit. Like, I mean, I, I'm imagining how Barksdale would handle this and he would have killed these guys. Um, so I think that's maybe also why people are not a huge fan of this season. Um, but regardless, I did like his storyline. And obviously we still have one episode, so... But I imagine they're going to kill him in the next episode as he is... He's meeting with them under a bridge with no one around, so they could easily get rid of him. Um, and then that would be one less, you know, piece of the puzzle to, uh, you know, testify against them. Although we'll see how Nick handles that because, you know, Nick agreed to do all this to protect his family. And Spiros is very uh, fond of Nick. He calls him Nico, which I imagine is the Greek equivalent of Nick. Um, and it's kind of implied in this episode he thinks of Nick like a son because he doesn't have a son. Um, so I'm wondering how that will affect his relationship with Spiros. But... Um, that is the main thing happening in this episode. Um, the other thing happening is with, um, you know, the Barksdale crew, um, Stringer meets with Omar and he tells him that it was, uh, brother Muzo or Muzan, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, but, um, he says that it's him 
who killed Brandon, Omar's boyfriend from the first season. Um, so Omar believes him and he goes after this guy and shoots him. Um, but uh, it's it, he they, they end up talking for a little bit and he reveals that he didn't kill the kid. So Omar believes him and calls 911 to save his life. Uh, and again, it, I, I feel like Stringer has been like just fucking up every single episode of this season. He just keeps making mistake after mistake. He has this weird game of cat and mouse where he's like trying to hide the fact that he's got Prop Joe's guys in the towers. Um, and I don't know why Prop Joe was not pissed off at the fact that his cousin or whatever, Cheese, got shot because Avon, um, you know, had that guy there. It's, I don't know, it seems like if I was working with someone and they, they end up getting one of my guys shot, I'd be pissed off. But Prop Joe doesn't really seem to care. So, I don't know. This season, the Barksdale crew, too, also, their storyline is not that interesting. Um, again, I get what's happening. It's like the calm before the storm of, you know, last season they they got taken down in prison. Now they're kind of building things back up again. Um, but, yeah, it, the, the, the Barksdale stuff has just felt so disconnected from the plot, which... I mean, I guess I get it. The police are, you know, they finish their case and are moving on to the next one, which is we do see that with the police. They, you know, they only want their guy. Like, the FBI only want to bust up the union. Um, but even still, it would have been nice to maybe see more of a connection there. Um, but who knows? Maybe next season they'll bring it together. Um, but that's pretty much the episode. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing the finale and seeing how it all ties together. Uh, I might watch it right now. We'll see. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about that soon. All right, so we're back with the uh, final episode of season two, Port in a Storm. Um, now I just realized that there's only 12 episodes this season, not the full uh, 13 from last uh, season. So uh, I'm wondering if 13 is going to be the norm or 12. Um, but yeah, another episode might have been good too. But um, oh well, the story is over for this season. Um, and yeah, now that I have the full picture, um, it definitely seems a little different than the last season. Um, it, it doesn't feel as resolved. I mean, of, of course, at the end of season one, there wasn't a big resolution. Like, in fact, most of the criminals got away with it. Um, but in this case, it just seemed like they didn't make any progress. Um, they obviously got fr uh, like the union and they, they, at the end montage, we see that the union is shut down, um, which is very sad and they're building condominiums on the port. Um, but yeah, it, uh, it, it feels like incomplete. Um, they didn't make any headway on the Greeks. They kind of didn't even come close. Um, they were always one step behind. Now, I'm thinking the next season they might discover some information because it looks like Daniel's unit is going to stick together um, and they are going to maybe work on Prop Joe, um, who has gone these last two seasons under the radar um, while well, they've been kind of focusing on the Barksdale guys. Um, but it's they, they took a picture of Stringer meeting with Prop Joe, so they're realizing that you know, the drug trade is still going on in Baltimore. Um, so they might focus again on that and that might lead them back to the Greeks. Um, but yeah, this season felt like kind of a diversion, um, which I like the union stuff again. I like its thematic qualities about America. Um, I liked the characters in the union. I liked the Sabatkas. Um, but yeah, it, it just kind of felt like it didn't really come together in a, in a meaningful way. So um, yeah, I can see why this season is less uh, well-regarded than the last one. Um, but we'll see if season three picks it back up. Um, but, of course, they you know, they make the arrests of the guys. They get um, the Russian, Sergei, or Ukrainian, I guess. Um, so they And they figure out what happened with Jane Doe, so the police clear off their caseload, which I wasn't too concerned about because it just helps like Rawls and Landman who I don't really like, but um, they, they managed to clear it. Um, the the weird thing that I found, the unresolved thing is um, the FBI agent. So um, he figures out that the leak was coming from the FBI from counterterrorism. Um, 
which so I guess what happened was the Greeks were giving them information about terrorism and in return they gave them information in case there was some shit that goes on which I mean I I can believe that in the sense that you know post 9-11 the, the government was really concerned about terrorism and they were willing to look the other way on anything if it helped them with the fight on terrorism um but is is it over like is it just like they're just like oh well I guess the you know we had a rat um or will they do something about this? It didn't make it clear whether the, the guy was going to pursue it fits. Um, but uh, we get another montage. again, another great song. I really liked it. Um, we're seeing what happened. Again, the union got shut down. Um, Russell's return to the port police. I wonder if she'll come back. Because um, she was a great character this season. I liked seeing her journey. Um, we also didn't really get a resolution on what's happening with Kima. Um, you know, we had a scene with her shopping for baby stuff and she just looked really unhappy with the idea of having a baby. Um, so I'm wondering, they just kind of left it up in the air. Like they didn't have like a dramatic fallout or anything, or maybe that'll happen next season. But, um, yeah, Kim is definitely, you know, struggling with the idea of, you know, parenthood and what that means for her career. Um, so I'd be interested to see where that goes. Um, uh... Nick goes into witness protection program. I thought he was going to get killed at the end here. It looked like there was someone following him, like that car. Um, but apparently not. Um, but he's just kind of sad about how everything turned out, um, quite rightly so. Um, there's a bar scene at the end where none of the characters really look happy. Um, and yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's just a different feeling. Like, I, I ended last season disappointed but still happy with the disappointment like it felt like oh, okay this wasn't a happy ending but it was it felt like an ending whereas this one i don't know just kind of pittered out um which i guess they feel the same way about the case it just kind of pittered out um it was cool seeing all these characters working together like bunk is finally with the crew um but i'm thinking he'll probably go back to homicide and daniels's detail will um focus on prop joe um look like mcnulty might get back together with the uh, prosecutor. Um, although, again, we didn't really get a good resolution to that. They set it up this season, but no resolution. Um, what else? Herc and Carver are really feeling, like, passed over because they have been they were treated horribly, this investigation. And I'm not really sure why. Like, I mean, I can get Carver because Daniels doesn't trust him. Um, but Herc was good uh, police. Um and last season, at the end, he saw that Herc was lecturing the new guys about using your head. So I don't think he's stupid anymore. Um, he's a good cop. He does good work. I don't know why they had this subplot this season where Daniels was treating him badly and not really involving him in the investigation. Um, so yeah, ultimately, I don't know. This season, a little disappointing. I, I had my hopes up till the very end, but it just never came together in the way I wanted um but yeah like i said who knows maybe season three will pick it back up i am still really excited to watch it um, i can't wait to dive into the next season probably take a little short break here while i do that but um yeah i can't wait for the next season and i'll talk to you guys soon